All right, so here it is. This is the House of Jawas AV8B Harrier 2 Plus. Finally uh, finished it. I uh, just barely finished it right now. Uh, this was a fun kit to build. Definitely worth the uh, the money that I paid for it. I think I only paid like uh, $23 for it, I believe it was. Uh, off of Amazon, it's a really good price. Okay, I'm trying to zoom in here, focus. All right, so here it is. Um, no big issues with putting this kit together. It all came together very nicely. Okay. There were a couple parts that I thought I was going to have issues with, but I ended up not, and that's up here on top. Uh, when putting the wings together with the fuselage, it looked like it wasn't going to go together properly, and it looked like it was going to be a big pain in the butt. But it ended up uh, coming together nice, and you can hardly tell that, uh, or at least I can, since I, I put it together, you know, I thought it was going to be, you know, noticeable, but um, let me go ahead and take this part off because it will fall off. Right in here is where I was first having problems with when I was putting it together. And a little bit of filling, not too much, a little bit of sanding, not a whole lot, and it came out really nice. Oh, I'm trying to get that in camera for you guys, sorry about that. Uh, let me get a little bit closer, right there. So right in here is where it came out nice. That's the part I was having a little bit of trouble with, but it uh, turned out to be uh, um, okay after putting it together. And another part here, um, right here, these intake vents here over the intake coverings okay there was a little slight gap there just put in some putty left it alone didn't touch it if i pressed on it good enough it would crack and you would actually see the putty would actually come off and you would definitely see a slight gap in there so i just left it like that okay so as long as you don't touch it and play with it then it's going to be fine but like most models when you put them together they're very delicate they're not for playing they're just for show Okay, and let me see here. Uh, can't really think of anything else that I was having problems with. Let me see here. Oh, yes, one more thing here. Okay, on the bottom. Let me grab it just right. I gotta watch out for that little yaw vein there. On the bottom. Take this back off right here uh, where's that there's supposed to be a little i uh, can't really see hold on one second let me put this down okay right in here there's supposed to be a little door here that's supposed to come down but with the gun on here i wanted to put the gun and i already had glued it on and then i went to put the door on oh i think i broke that little piece that's okay i want to put the uh the door on and I found that it wasn't going to open up so I had to leave it closed and uh, so the, the gun the guns here uh, could actually be on there because there's another one that's just two pieces that just go straight down the fuselage like this underneath and then there's this one here for the gun so I wanted the gun on there but unfortunately um, it didn't go together right there was also also big gaps by the gun here so I had to put putty in there okay to fill that in so you can't see it Okay, so, and then I think that was it. Uh, those were the two major things there. Also, one more thing. I don't know if you can see it. I sure notice it. Let me see. Bring this camera down a little bit more. Bring it level. You notice anything about this, uh, the kit? Let me put this on. The nose area looks a little bit too high for this kit. As you can see, it's all the way up here. It should be down a little bit more toward the top of my nail. So I may end up breaking this back off, this front gear, breaking it off later on, and then uh, sanding it down, then re-gluing it, because this is just way too high. It is the highest I've ever seen on a kit. Okay, it doesn't look 
good at all. Also the rear uh, landing gear in the back doesn't quite touch the ground. Okay. You can, it does here because the cardboard is uh, not even, but when you get it on a straight surface that's really flat, that landing gear will be up just a little bit, maybe a couple millimeters off the ground, okay? But uh, I don't think anybody else is going to notice it. It's just going to go on my shelf and just going to sit there, so. Okay, so just so you know, but everything else is okay. So if you're going to buy this kit, I would suggest uh, looking at the landing gear in the front first before you glue it to see if you actually want to sand some of it down then place it on there because I definitely want to do it as you can see. It's, let me remove this so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so it's flat there. Okay, so as you can see it's a bit high. Okay. But overall the kit came out good. Also uh, this middle pylon here. The middle pylon right here where these J-dams are at. Um, didn't come with the kit. I actually took that off a F-14 uh, a Bombcat kit from Academy. Okay and put them on here since I like the J-dam. I think these, uh, these bombs look really good on here. Okay, looks really nice. Let me try and get in a closer look for you. Might as well leave that off. Okay, so there are the J dams right there. So there it is. So, and then this AIM 120 here, I believe that went to a, uh, a um, Revel F18. F model kits and I just put it on there. I had two sidewinders that came with this kit, but I wanted to put an AIM-120 and an AIM-9 sidewinder on there. So I think it looks a little bit more um, better with those two missiles like that, two different missiles, one for a uh, medium range and then one for the uh, short range here. AIM-9 of course being for the short range and the AIM-120 for a medium range. Intake came out pretty good. See there, there's the fan blades in there. Okay, looks nice. See, there's a, a yaw vein up there. If you can see it. Right there is a yaw vein. Okay. One thing about this kit, I don't know if you noticed it, I painted the nose gray. Um, I was going to do a different uh, squadron, um, which has like the anniversary on the back here, but since these decals weren't conforming properly to the panel lines, I went ahead and went with something a little bit easier. So uh, this aircraft and this uh, these decals should this all the nose should all be one color. It shouldn't be a darker gray, but you know I think it looks good like that anyway. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. Okay, and then I darkened up the back of the uh, with the exhaust. Nozzles are there. Okay, I looked online at some of the other pictures and saw that some of them are actually dirty like that with the uh, exhaust on there. You might not see it right here, but I will take pictures and post pictures after this. You can get a better look at the aircraft. Okay, so top of the aircraft came out really good. Coloring came out just perfect. The weathering came out nice. Let me go ahead and lift this up again. Let me turn it this way. I don't know if you can notice it, but I will take pictures. So. But yeah, this kit is, this was a nice kit. Uh, would I build another one of these? Um, probably not. I would probably uh, try a different kit to see how other kits are. I think uh, there's another, I'm not sure if Tamiya makes any of these kits, but I would definitely try something different. Would I recommend this kit? Sure, I would recommend it. It's it's a fun build, not too many problems. Um, you won't really have any extra pieces left over unless you're doing, um, unless you buy some photo wedge parts and you put it in the kit. Then you'll have some extra pieces, but other than that, you're not gonna have anything left over. I know some of the other kits, 
uh, you have extra parts left over, a lot of extra parts, but this kit you really don't. Okay, so there that is. Nice aircraft. It looks real when you're looking at it, especially from where I'm at. You get in the right just like it looks real.